Creating prototypes in Adobe XD, it's really easy. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it. And by the way, I'm also creating an Adobe XD course. So stay tuned on that. But with further ado, let's jump into my computer. So the very first thing that, that uh, we want to do is to go into the prototyping mode, which is uh, on the very top left. So if you just click on a prototype, we are now officially into prototyping mode. And as you can see, we have a few iOS screens. And uh, if we select one from the artboard column on the left, you can see that now that we're in prototyping mode, we're going to have this arrow and also the blue color uh, selection, which is going to highlight and emphasize this, uh, that we're in the right place. So if we use the left mouse button and we click on the arrow and we start dragging it around, you can see that now we have uh, the ability to create uh, connections. So if I hover over one of these uh, screens, uh, you can see that now we're going to have uh, these uh, blue borders around the screens. And if I release, uh, you can see that now a connection has been created. Now, at the moment, uh, if we just uh, um, you know look at this line as we hover over it, we're going to have this uh, tap pop over and uh, this is giving us a hint as to which trigger we currently have so basically what uh, adobe xd is saying is that uh, if we tap over anywhere in the screen uh, we're going to be redirected to this other screen and uh, we can see it uh, as a preview by going on this uh, play button right here on, on the top right and uh, as you can see everything is pretty much clickable and uh, if I click on it, uh, I'm going to be redirected to the other screen. Now, what about uh, if I just want uh, the button to redirect to the other screen instead of the entire area? Well, it's actually really simple. You simply have to select uh, the button and be sure to select the group and not uh, just uh, the text uh, or the rectangle, ideally. And uh, as you can see, we still have uh, the same arrow right here and I can simply drag and drop over the other screen. And if I try and preview this again, you can see that if I click anywhere around here, this is not going to be, uh, this is not going to redirect to the other screen. But if I click on the sign up button, we're going to be redirected right here. So there's these two main options. You can either select the entire artboard or you can select uh, individual groups uh, or even indiv individual elements. Now, if we click uh, on, uh, um, as we have this selected, this button, you can see that on the right, uh, we're going to have a bunch of options. And uh, the ones which you want to focus the most on are the interactions. And uh, this is going to give us hint as to which trigger is needed in order to for that uh, transition to happen. In this case, is tap. We can also uh, set it to drag. So basically, for dragging, and this is going to be good for a certain type of interactions. And there are also some other interactions which are rarely going to use really, which is uh, keys and gamepad or even voice. Um, maybe more in the the future on uh, on that, but definitely the most common one, especially for mobile apps, is going to be either the tap or the, the, the drag. So you, we can see that uh, here in the actions, uh, we also have the type of transition. So basically, this is going to be the uh, transition by default. We also have auto animate uh, overlay scroll to previous artboard, also audio playback, speech playback, which again, I would, uh, wouldn't really use them all that often. And you can simply try and uh, uh, see what, what these look like. So as you can see, it, uh, the auto animator uh, just created um, uh, an auto animation based on uh, what uh, Adobe XD thought uh, would be the best uh, uh, way to do it. Uh, if we click on overlay, you can see that basically we're going to have the previous screen as the overlay. So this might be good for models or um, pop-ups, you know, things that, of that nature, but uh, uh, it's not going to be ideal in this specific scenario. Uh, we also have the scroll too that, you know, if you select it, we're basically not uh, going to, to see anything in this case. So sometimes it's just about, uh, you know, trying, but for the most part, transition is going to be 
the most common one which you're going to use pretty much all the time. Also a checkbox to preserve the scrub position, that's uh, something that uh, you're looking for. And uh, the destination, uh, we can select it also directly from here instead of like dragging and drop uh, uh, the arrow, especially if you have like a complex uh, document with, you know, maybe hundreds of screens. Uh, maybe it's going to make more sense uh, to, you know, just uh, create a connection and then set it up uh, directly from this drop down. It might be easier. So something to keep in mind as an extra option at your disposal. You also have the animation, which uh, by default uh, on transition is set to default uh, to dissolve, sorry. And uh, we also have uh, a few slider and uh, push animations. So if you try the slide left uh, and we click on play again, and we, we can see that basically this screen slided, you know, from, uh, uh, from left. Uh, and uh, we can try also this the same slide up. As you can see, this is going to give us this cool little animation. And uh, let's try the push left to see it as a, a comparison. Basically, that's this this one is going to to push instead of uh, create the slide effect. If we try push up, we can see that uh, that's how it's going to look. Now, another cool feature is uh, the fact that uh, we have also the easing options. So you can uh, basically select uh, uh, the ease out, uh, ease in, uh, ease in, ease out, uh, also snap, uh, wind up and bounce. Uh, and these are all things that, you know, you, you really just want to try and uh, see which option is going to give the best feeling for that specific uh, user experience. Uh, scenario which uh, you're creating. So there really isn't uh, any right or wrong. Usually by default, I would just keep uh, one of the ease options. You can also select the duration. So if, you, if I want to make it uh, much uh, um, longer in duration, I can set it to one second. And, uh, you know, I can even manually enter, you know, some, something like uh, um, five seconds. And uh, this is going to take uh, almost forever <laughs> for the transition to happen, but um, definitely something that could work certain occasions and uh, scenarios. Um, you can also fix the position when scrolling. This is going to be useful for menus and uh, you know things of that nature. Also the actions, but we're not really going to go that much into it as uh, these are going to be uh, elements which uh, you're really going to to use. Uh, the audio and the speech playback, <clears throat> but these are not really um, intended to be uh, used all that often. And uh, basically, we can, uh, you know, just create uh, all sorts of different, uh, um, of different prototypes. So, for example, I can simply uh, go over here and uh, just make it so that when I press on these uh, login buttons, I'm going to have uh, this uh, this prototype uh, going from one to the other, and uh, I think that here we we selected the uh, the previous one, which is the transition. And another cool thing uh, that uh, you can do is uh, you can click on record, uh, and basically this is going to record. Uh, I mean, I need to just give uh, uh, the system preferences to this, but. Basically, once you give uh, the, the system preferences uh, um, the option to do that, uh, you're basically going to be able to record uh, directly into um, into Adobe XD. So, you know, just check this. Uh, um, I'm not going to do it now because I don't want to, to quit. Uh, but essentially, once you do it, uh, you can essentially record uh, the entire transition. So anything that you're doing in this prototype mode, uh, you're going to, to be able to have uh, a video recording of this. Uh, so pretty cool. And uh, yeah, overall, this uh, is uh, it when it comes to prototyping Adobe XD. And I'll see you in the next video. So really hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please leave a thumbs up as this motivates me to create more videos. And I've been a UI UX designer for over eight years now and I share my experience both being an employee and a freelancer and consultant 
and uh, basically I'm uh, just giving it all away for free so you're going to find over 300 videos on my channel on both uh, software tutorials and uh, also freelance design and uh, business advice so if you're interested in all that uh, feel free to check it out uh, and subscribe and turn on the bell notification if you're interested in uh, notifications each and every time uh, uh, if you want to be notified each and every time a video comes out so this is it for this video and i'll see you in the next one